In the previous videos, we have seen how to make use of structural directives and attribute directives. But oftentimes during our development, we may need to create our own custom directives. Creating our own custom directives in Angular is fairly easy. It involves making use of the add directive decorator with a bit of metadata and a known method signature on a class. In this video, we'll be creating a custom directive called my highlighter that will highlight the background of the element that it is used on. Creating a directive is similar to creating a component. Let's start by creating a new file for our directive. So I'm going to add a new file called app.myhighlighter.ts file. We start by importing the add directive decorator which is part of the at angular slash core module bundle. Now that we have imported the directive decorator, we can make use of it. So I'm going to do at directive The next thing that we want to do is to add a selector. The selector gives a name to the directive. The CSS syntax for selecting an attribute is a name in square brackets. So we surround our directive name in square brackets as well. So we're going to call our directive my highlighter. So I'm going to give it the name my highlighter. The Angular team recommends picking a selector name with a prefix to ensure that it cannot conflict with any standard HTML attributes now or in the future. We should never prefix our directive names with ng. That prefix belongs to Angular and we don't want to confuse our directives with their directives. In this case, our prefix is my. Now let's go ahead and add a class. I'm going to start with export and then class followed by the name of our directive which is going to be my highlighter directive. So that's the name of the class that I'm going to give. Now in order to change the background of the element on which our my highlighter directive is going to be used, we need access to the element so we can change the background. Element ref is also part of the angular slash core module bundle and it provides access to the underlying native element or the DOM node. So we want to import that to make use of it. And since we are already importing directive decorator from the angular slash core module bundle, we can just add a comma and include element ref. So you don't have to write another import statement. Since we want our element to be highlighted just upon using this directive, Let's add our code in the constructor. Let's talk a little bit about constructor. A constructor is a special method of a class that initializes an object of that type. So let's go ahead and add a constructor to our class. Let's also add a parameter to our constructor with element ref so we can use it. Okay, so now we have a reference to our element ref called el. So we're going to make use of el. Element ref has properties that will allow us to set the background style of an element. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to get el.nativeElement.style. So el.nativeElement is actually going to give you the element on which this directive is being used. So now that we have that element, we want to change some style. So we're going to do dot style dot background. And I'm going to give it a color of yellow. Oops, looks like I got the spelling of the constructor wrong. So let me correct that. OK, so now our directive is ready. But before we can start using it, we need to add this directive 
to the declarations under module.ts file. So let's go to our app module, which is here. And let's add our newly created directive to the app module. Okay, so now that we have added our directive to our app module, this directive is now going to be available in the entire module. Now let's go back to our app.component.ts file and make use of the directive that we have just created. In here, we want to add an h1 tag and add some text to it. So I'm going to just say uh, my custom directive. And what we want to do now is to make use of our newly created directive, which is my hyphen highlighter. So we're going to add that to the h1 tag and then save it. Back in the browser, we should now notice that our h1 tag has a yellow background. 